Ah, saving. One of the the nicest things that was added in this game. Uh, no more passwords. All right, welcome back to more Metroid 2. Uh, so we're in the second main area, and this is probably one of the more dangerous enemies in the game. Is this uh, sentry thing? I don't see a whole lot of them though. So. This uh, sort of center room has two save areas, weirdly. I don't know why they did that. They just, I don't know. Anyways. All right, so I know that looks like lava down there, but apparently it's water. Um, I don't know, because uh, I get through the rest of the area, and I and the earthquake hasn't happened, so I know there's I'm missing something. Um, but I'm not really sure <laughs> why. Like, and then I just you know what? Why not? I'll just try it, see if uh, see if it works. Um, and it does. So, uh. You might want to go down there first, just get the Metroid that's down there out of the way. Um, I don't really have an optimal route for you. Um, as anyone who's watched my stuff knows, I am not an optimal player. Um, there are some very optimal players when it comes to Metroid games. I think uh, Super in particular they, I think, have gotten it down to um, speed running by frames now. I don't know if that's true, but um, I feel like that's what I've heard before. But that game is very, like, fun to sequence break. And there are some very good sequence breakers in that game. Um, unfortunately you gotta use the spider ball to get out of there. Don't quite have uh, the power up that we're going to be getting in this episode. Yeah, that's the thing with the um, Metroid skins. You can actually <laughs> fall out the bottom if there's nothing solid underneath it. Alright, so we got one more thing we need to get up here, and then we should be good to explore the rest of the level. Or the rest of the area. Yeah, there's not really levels in Metroid games. It's more sectioned off by areas and everything's kind of interconnected um so we need to get a missile pack that's the thing like with these with the first two games other than missiles and you know items obviously because or like the upgrades the different upgrades that you get there's really not a lot to find Obviously, you have energy tanks, but there's no power bombs. There's no super missiles. None of that was at. None of that was in the original two games. It was only added uh, for super or in super, and then they became you know main mainstays for later games. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the Prime series happens between the first game and the second game. Um, obviously, we're still waiting on Prime 4, but... <laughs> um, those... There really wasn't a whole lot, like of connection between the Prime series and the Mainline series um, until, like, this... until this game's remake. Alright. 
so I don't think there's really anything else up here. That's the one thing, like, if you want to explore in this game, they do tend to do that type of stuff to keep you from being able to, like, explore more. Um, I don't think there's any way to really kill, like, the, the flower things. Um, I think the, literally the entire point is just to give you a way to replenish your health. Because we have a mini boss up here. Uh, ironically, this I think is like the only mini boss other than the Metroids in the game. And I think there's there's only one other boss in the game, and that's the final boss. This is Arachnus, which uh, became a mainstay sort of mini boss enemy in later games. Um, Arachnus is not too bad. I'd recommend using the bombs. And he goes down pretty easily. I've tried doing missiles, but I haven't really had any luck with them. I don't know if he's immune to them, but I don't think you can hurt him at all when he's in his ball form. So, he, uh, he gave us the spring ball, which... Well, I'll be showing off a little more later. I hate the placement of that thing. Alright, these guys, again, these guys suck. I don't like them. Because they often show up when you have to deal with the... Uh, um, with uh, wall climbing and stuff. So, I know that hole looks tempting to try and get into, uh, but don't, don't bother. Um, there's nothing there. There was another one that went, like, uh, to the screen. You're probably thinking, wow, you're taking a lot of health, or taking a lot of damage, and yes, yes I am. Um, it, it's not exactly a desirable situation to be in, um, and especially since I'm nowhere near, uh, an energy refill, so I gotta be a lot more careful than what you should probably be in this, <laughs> in this game. One of the nice little touches, and I don't know if you can really hear it, um, but there's a beeping sound. It's not quite as annoying as the original game's uh, low health beeping sound, but it's more like a low beep, and it gets faster and faster the lower your health gets. And then when you start replenishing your health, the... Yeah, as you can hear, it got a little faster. I really hope <laughs> you didn't hear my stomach just growl. I don't know why. I'm, I mean, it's a noon, but I I guess it's because I just had... Uh, I only had, like, a cliff bar for lunch or breakfast. So I thought that sentry thing would drop more health. I, I don't know. I thought... Um, I thought if it did drop health, it drops a lot of it. I like living dangerously, okay? <laughs> um, so what I should probably have been doing was heading towards the... There's a, an energy tank somewhere in this area. And I probably should be going after that. But, again, I like living dangerously. <laughs> um, I don't know why they have that cutscene again. Like, uh, Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure I don't head back out. I think it's because I'm at such low health that I'm getting kind of nervous at this point. 
Um, but I decided to just press on. This is me forgetting that I have the spring ball, so I'm I'm doing it the long way by using bombs. Uh, be wasting missiles. Because, yeah, there are a few points in this game where you start running out of missiles pretty quickly. Because um, a lot of the later Metroids do take a lot of missiles to kill. So, just like the first game, this game does suffer a bit from copy and paste. Um, and this room in particular is pretty evident of it. So, that's the spring ball. You just, I mean, you jump while you're in the ball form. To get out of uh, Spider Ball, by the way, you just have to hit the jump button. Those things always make me nervous. This room really isn't too bad to get through, uh, just because you have stuff that will block them. Alright, so unfortunately you can't get into that side from over here. Um, you unfortunately do have to go around. Energy tank! I need it! Yeah, unfortunately we gotta backtrack back around. Yeah, Spring Ball makes things a lot easier. Um, being able to just use it to jump on to the ceiling and eat then holding down to go in the Spider Ball makes it so much easier. That jerk. Yeah, at this point, I'm I'm really getting nervous, because at this, I mean, it just takes one uh, disappearing block um, to appear on top of you to ruin your day. And obviously, unlike Metroid One, where you don't have to use passwords. Um, you do have a save feature, obviously, but again, just like with any Metroid game and save features, um, well, Metroid Shred's a little different, but, uh, sa saving and then dying will return you back to the save point, so if you haven't saved in a while, guess what, you're you're gonna have to go back and redo a bunch of stuff. But I think at this point, uh, we're home free. We can get the, uh, get the energy tank and save ourselves. Now we have the high jump, which is, as you can probably guess, makes you jump really high. Missiles, nice. Do you like some of that? Unfortunately, I don't think you can go in the morph ball while you're in the middle of a jump. I don't think that's that was really a thing until later games. Thankfully, you can stand on these guys. Um, makes taking them out way easier. And at this point, I'd recommend just using the spider ball to get over there. So, um, at the time of this upload, it'll probably be... Um... Maybe about a week after uh, 
So, we originally did the original Metroid, um, sort of in the same block as um, our uh, Pokemon Red and um, Mario 1 and Castlevania 1 series. Um, and it's been about three years since we did Metroid 1. So, I'm happy to get back to this series. I'm not really looking forward to doing Super, because I've never beat Super. And I think it's because the, the run button is a separate button. And you need to do that for certain things, and just to go faster. So, it, I don't know, it's, it's unfortunate. Um, I, I would really like to be better at Super. Um, but I, I don't know, it's hard for me to get used to the run button. Alright, so we picked up the Wave Beam. And just like, uh, in Metroid 1, um, it shoots a little wave sinusoidal, um, uh, projectile. I did kind of forget that there wasn't anything else down here. So, I just decided to cut that stuff out. Now, I am going to guess that I'm probably not going to be getting the best ending. Um just because I'm not that good at the game. <laughs> uh, I've, I'm trying to get better at it, though. <laughs> um, I, I want to say it's two hours to get the best ending. You gotta beat the game within two hours. Um, but I am going to try and get 100%. That is kind of my goal. Just like uh, in Metroid 1. Alright, so... I think at this point... Uh... Did we go this way yet? I can't remember. No, I don't think we went down. I think we only went up. So I believe there's three Metroids down in this area, and I want to say at least one of them is Gamma. Alright. Yeah, once you get the hang of it, killing the Metroids aren't... Or killing the Metroids isn't very difficult. They go down pretty easily. Um, now, obviously, that's talking about the Alphas. And to an extent, the Gammas. The Gammas aren't very difficult. They just take more hits. And they have a more annoying attack. I will say, the Wave Beam... <laughs> the best thing about the Wave Beam is the fact that it makes uh, getting rid of the sand way easier. Because with any of the other beams, or more specifically with the Ice Beam and the... Uh, and the, uh, later the plasma beam. Those are single projectiles, which makes clearing a bunch of sand kind of annoying and tedious. Alright, unfortunately there's nothing really in this room. I think this is just a result of copy and paste, this extra room over here. So we need to head back to the main shaft, um, and there will be a second Metroid that we need to go to on the left side. So much easier <laughs> to just go through all the sand with the wave beam than it is with the ice beam. I think it's right through here. 
Ah, I know your weakness. Low ceilings! I do find fighting these things in low ceilings to be a little easier, uh, just because they can't... They're more constrained. They can't just uh, go all over the place. It makes hitting them a little easier, I find. Alright. So, unfortunately, there is still one more Metroid that we need to kill. Um, and again, uh, it's down in that what looks like lava, but is actually water. Now, I'm not sure if they just, like, messed up and didn't put the correct, like, liquid or whatever i i guess sprite technically oh never mind we have another gamma we need to kill again gammas are not much different from alphas uh they're only they're a bit more aggressive and they have that sort of electrical type attack on their front um, I hesitate to say just go for it, uh, but it really, it's really hard to avoid getting hit at all when fighting Metroids. Um, it's just gonna happen, unfortunately, so make sure to get those energy tanks, <laughs> or replenish your health as often as possible. Because there are definitely some sections throughout the game where health pickups are very sparse. And that that's probably the biggest fault of Metroid 2, is there are insist instances where health and um, missiles in particular are hard to find. And especially in a game that is... The main purpose is to kill enemies that have one single weakness, which are missiles. Um, not being able to access uh, missiles easily, having or at least having like large missile drops, uh, is kind of difficult, kind of frustrating. All right. So, again, for whatever reason, this, I'm pretty sure this is the same sprite work that um, is supposed to be lava, but they use it here, I'm guessing just because it's clear and you can see through it. Alright, I think there's one more item that we need to get. It's kind of hard to tell, but the, the earthquake is happening while we're heading up this shaft. Oop, forgot that I had the... had the missiles already. Hey, where's my item? Damn chozos. So, our item is actually hidden. We need to go and find it. Hmm, that seems like the item we're looking for. Unfortunately, you can't destroy these orbs with your beam, so you gotta use bombs to clear them out. And, as you can probably guess, this is the Varia suit. Now, this is the game that actually introduces Samus's iconic shoulder pads. <laughs> Um, now, the reason why that was done was because it was on the Game Boy, and the the original Game Boy obviously didn't have color, so you couldn't, unlike in the first game, where they could change the color of her suit, that really couldn't be done effectively in this game, so they gave her the, 
the large shoulder pads to uh, distinguish that. Now again, the Mork Ball is kind of floaty. If you try and jump while you're already bouncing, um, it's going to neuter, neuter your jump and make it kind of difficult to um, jump correctly. As you can see, you can you can actually destroy the Bramble with your beam. Um, I'm not going to bother doing that because it's kind of pointless since we can't even jump up to this area without going over and jumping on the platforms. Alright, I think that's pretty much everything in the area. So, we're just going to go ahead and start working our way out of here. And then in the next part, we will continue our adventure and um, try and get some new items. Kill some more Metroids. It's all good stuff. But, we're not quite there. We need to get out of the area. Again, Metroid 2 is definitely more sectioned off compared to Metroid 1. Because the general layout is... There is a path from your ship to where the final boss is, and you just kind of divert off of that path into separate little areas. But um, that will be it for this episode, and I will see you guys in the next part. Thanks for watching.